Now, the rest of the story. Hoagland was in his 20s when he started bootlegging. It was the height of the Prohibition era. There was much money to be made smuggling illegal hooch from tub to speak and state to state. Hoagland was visiting New York one summer. He was preparing to return home to Indiana when a friend with a thriving underground booze business approached him, told the young man there was $100 in it for him if he'd carry a suitcase full of champagne back to Bloomington. Hoagland said he sure could use the money. From that moment on, he regretted the decision as none other in his entire life. The interminable sweat-drenched nightmare began with an arduous journey to the train station. The suitcase was impossibly heavy. Although it had been packed so the bottles would not clank, it announced itself grotesquely as the young bootlegger staggered beneath it. There were annoying offers of assistance from unsuspecting observers, which Hoagland refused with suspicious defensiveness. And yet he managed to arouse no suspicion, despite his obtrusive conviction that every eye was an X-ray trained on that silent, damning piece of luggage. Well, finally, the Greenhorn Rum Runner reached the station, that train and his seat, and with the champagne, with that illicit luggage situated comfortably close at hand, Hoagland sat there trying to convince himself that he was home free. In fact, he relaxed so much that by the time the train reached Pittsburgh, he was ready to get off and buy a soft drink, which he did. Without the suitcase, big mistake. He turned just in time to see the train leaving the station, gathering steam, disappearing in the distance. Well, he wired Columbus to have his name-tagged luggage transferred to the next train, which he presently boarded. Surely they would have discovered the stuff by now. Surely he was going to prison. He just knew it. He was going to prison. All during that long train ride to Ohio, he resolved himself to take his punishment honorably, to hold his head high when they came to take him off the train and lead him away to jail. He was young, he told himself. First offense, they may go easy on him. The next morning, Hoagland stuck a trembling hand underneath his train berth. And much to his surprise and relief, there they were, his bags, untampered. Gratefully, he plunked a sawbuck in the hand of the porter who'd brought them. The porter grinned at the young man. You couldn't look more worried, the porter said. You couldn't look more worried if those bags were full of champagne. And Hoagland agreed. Well, when he reached home, the $100 smuggling fee was his. But his career as a bootlegger was over. And his career as a law student had just begun. For that's how the young man paid his law school tuition and his first month's fraternity house dues with the hundred dollars he had earned smuggling champagne from New York to Bloomington, Indiana. No, he never became a famous lawyer. But he did manage to compose some music that, that you will recognize. Georgia on my mind, Lazy Bones, and Stardust. That's right, the greenhorn rum runner who might have gone to prison went instead to stardom. Hoagland, Hoagie Carmichael. And now you know the rest of the story.